Hi, welcome to the Interaxis channel, Interaxis.io. Today we're going to keep talking about stable coins and we're going to talk about one called Reserve. Um, and it's a little bit like Cello, which we previously talked about in terms of trying to bank the unbanked and kind of build the network. Uh, first, I want to remind you that we keep um, bringing out videos like this and bringing out content. And so we want you to subscribe so you get the most up-to-date content that we have, the most up-to-date videos as we release them. You can check them out. Tell us what you think. Please talk about them in the comments below. Whatever questions you might have, uh, please go ahead and ask. We try to answer those as much as possible. Find us on Twitter, at Interaxis8, uh, and, and we chat there as well so please go follow us on Twitter subscribe to us here now we're going to keep talking about stable coins in this case reserve we talked about cello we talked about how it's essentially built uh, it's an entire network that was built to try to bank the unbanked and because of that they had to create their own stable coin well reserve is a little bit similar they are trying to to go forward with this banking of the unbanked the difference is reserve is built on top of ethereum so Reserve actually has um, uh, a couple currencies as well, just like Celo had Celo Gold and, and Celo USD. Reserve has RSV and uh, RSR, I believe it's called. Yeah, RSR. So RSV is actually the stable coin. Whereas RSR is a token that was actually you know, sold, had, had kind of an ICO, so people have actually bought it. And a lot of that provided the funding that is now uh, allowing Reserve to build out their protocol on top of Ethereum. So the one thing that Reserve has going for it is it's already on top of Ethereum. It's already out there. They don't have to hope that people in the, in the world um, utilize their network. The other nice part is it's already built on top of the DeFi protocol, right? They, it already has access to other DeFi protocols. So if Reserve takes off as a stable coin, well, you can see where it can be useful. Uh, it can be plugged into to protocols like Compound and, and Fulcrum and, and some of the other uh, lending protocols. It can be, um, it can be utilized in, in other uh, stable coin yield protocols and such. Okay, so the, the way that this works is uh, a little bit similar in that you have the reserve and ideally it's pegged, you know, one to, to one to the U.S. dollar. Okay, like most of these are, they've chosen the U.S. dollar because that's the one that everyone knows. It's the global uh, reserve currency. Now, what... What happens here is that it also has a, a basket of other commodities or, or of other currencies, cryptocurrencies in this case, backing it, right? So in, in this um, protocol, it has a bunch of other currencies. Now, if the value of RSV goes above a uh, dollar, so say again, it, it goes to a dollar five, uh, the protocol isn't going to necessarily go. Uh, that, again, that means that the demand is higher the than the supply. We need more RSV to take up some of that uh, some of that demand, right? We need to create more supply so the protocol can create more. But if I'm an RSR holder, the idea is I can go sell my RSR for a, a dollar. I can go sell it to the protocol for one dollars worth one RSV, for instance, and then I can go into the market and sell my RSVs. It, it's kind of the same thing. I can go sell this, sell $1 worth into the protocol. I get my one RSV and I can go sell it in the market for $1.05 and I've profited five cents. So the idea is to have the arbitragers go in and actually create the, that peg by virtue of incentives and benefits. The fact that if I own RSR, if I own these tokens, the benefit to me is I can go in the protocol and redeem it for a dollar, a dollar for one RSV, regardless of what RSV is worth at the time, and then I can potentially go sell that RSV for, for more, and I can profit on the difference. Okay, now, if the value of RSV goes down to, say, 98 cents, that means that supply is, uh, is potentially higher than demand, and um, we, we can go the opposite way, right? I can, I can take my RSV, put it in the, in the uh, protocol, and kick back RSR. Okay, so that is a little bit about reserve. Now, the idea is, again, 
you want to you want to use reserve they want reserve to be a stable coin that is used worldwide that is another uh, a, a better stable coin that is used on different networks and so they need developers to build applications using RSV as the stable coin of choice lending applications investing in insurance and such so they are um, building out the the team of develop or the, or the development teams around the world that are going to use the protocol to build on top of. So that's a little bit about, I uh, hope you enjoyed this, a little bit about Reserve and how it's working a little bit different from Celo, whereas Celo had its own network and the goal is you utilize mobile phones and be able to transact business around the world using their network, the applications built on their protocol and they had to create their, their stable coin. What Reserve is doing is utilizing the Ethereum backbone and then and, and potentially other uh, blockchains in the future, but really the Ethereum backbone and be able to launch their own stable coin uh, that uses their reserve, their RSR token, as the token that takes in the volatility. So this doesn't take in a whole lot of volatility. This is what takes in the volatility. And the incentive mechanisms there are the ones that say, if the value of this goes up, people are going to do what people do, right? And they're going to take their RSR, they're gonna put it in the, in the protocol, they're gonna mint an RSV, go sell it in the open market for $1.05, it only costs them a dollar. So they make the arbitrage opportunity. Now, in the, the, there's the, the, the goal in the future to have other uh, currencies, to have other stable coins. RSV can be either be, uh, ideally can be backed by other, another basket of currencies or another basket of goods and not just the US dollar. For right now, it's just the US dollar. Now, another difference is RSR is really not a governance token as of yet. So there's not this idea of we're gonna let the RSR holders decide what that basket is or what other uh, currencies we wanna stabilize against. Um, we're just going to kind of stabilize against the U.S. dollar and get that out there and, and I guess uh, kind of see what happens. Um, but right now that's a little bit about reserve. It, two, two cryptos, Celo and Reserve, that are both going after this unbanked market in different ways, trying to create this stable coin so that the users can then transact. They can lend, they can borrow, they can invest, they can insure, whatever else they need to do in a stable denominated currency because in their home currency, their home currency might not be stable. Their home currency might be subject to uh, all sorts of fluctuations and volatility based on the whims of the banks and the government and the, and the monetary policy and everything. So they're saying, look, take your home currency and convert it into the, into the RSV in this case, and it will be stable, it will be pegged to the dollar, and you are now based on whatever the, the US Fed does, and whatever the US Fed monetary policy is, because that is the uh, worldwide, the global reserve currency. So that's a little bit about reserve. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, give us comments below, uh, follow us on Twitter, at Interaxis8, info at interaxis.io is the email address, and we hope to see you in the next video.